r slash credit men of reddit what are some telltale signs that a woman is creepy asking for your passwords phone email facebook etc as a sign of trust nope i have nothing to hide However, when you think you need to have that information, it shows you already don't trust me. And anyone who asks, and then says they won't use it, is lying. They may not use it that day, or even soon, but they will use it at some point, because the same suspicion that led to the masking for it will lead them to use it. Edit. So maybe I wasn't clear about a couple of things. First, I'm not talking about something like your Netflix or Amazon Prime password, which can just be convenience. Hell, I have some of my friends' Netflix passwords. I'm talking phone, ML and social media specifically. Second, if you want to offer it, more power to you. But someone shouldn't ask for that is my thought, especially not as a way to prove that you aren't cheating. And three, like most things, marriage changes stuff. I still think it's a bit much to have all of someone else's passwords and have access to everything that they ever do or people say to them. But I understand it a bit more. I caught one of my exes talking to a guy online who was clearly trying to break us up, and she was receptive to it, at least enough to continue talking to him, when his intentions were clear. Came home from work early, and she was on the computer and quickly closed the window, as soon as she realized I was in the room, but not before I saw what she was up to. Ended up poking around the computer looking for stuff. It was my computer, found the conversation, and confronted her. We talked about it, and she expressed that she wasn't happy. She had moved away from home to live with me and missed her family and friends. I decided to stick it out and try to make things better for her, and things did get better for a bit. We made time to go back and visit, invited friends of hers out to us, and I put a real effort into integrating her with my friends. It lasted for quite a while after that, but every once in a while I would get the urge to poke around and validate that she wasn't doing shit behind my back. What I quickly realized is that having to do that is a sign your trust is already broken beyond repair, and that if you're looking for something you're going to find it, whether it exists or not. You will do whatever mental gymnastics are necessary to turn situations that are completely innocent into things to worry about and just stress yourself out to the point where it boils over. Once you've reached that point, unless you can work it out in therapy, you're really only delaying the inevitable by sticking around. It's not a healthy way to live. I wouldn't do it to myself again and would never allow it from a partner. If I can't trust someone enough to not worry, and or they don't trust me enough to take me at my word, then we are not going to work out. So it is time to cut the losses and try to exit in a civil manner before things get worse. I'm very upfront about my boundaries and expectations now, as soon as things start developing from casual to serious. Have had to drop a few women for trying to push them. It sucks, but it's a hell of a lot better to be alone with self-respect than to be with someone that doesn't respect you. People can only treat you like a doormat if you let them. My buddy had some friends over for his 22nd birthday. Some of us are still in college and stuff. I didn't work until 3pm the next day, so I'm like sure, why not. I hang out with them, and we go to this bar for trivia. It was fun. Not much of a trivia person myself, but it was good being with my friends. Then they're like, hey, let's go to Jax. Now Jax is this club known for being one of those places where single men and women go to find hookups. Now I'm a good moral man, I've been in a relationship for about 4 years and I've been to clubs slash bars plenty of times with my buddies, and there's never been problems. I'd never do an unfaithful thing. To me it's just socializing with my buddies. The night is still young, and I'm with some of my best friends, so we are all trying to have a fun night. So we are there having a good time, after about 12.30 to 1 o'clock the dance floor starts to leak out, and the whole place becomes this dirty grind fest. There's still groups of people who are just hanging around and talking, as we are doing, but it is packed pretty tight. This chick grabs my arm, and pulls me into her, and starts trying to dance. Again, I like to think of myself as a man of character, I wouldn't do anything even close to unfaithful, so I make it as clear as possible, hey, I'm just hanging out with my buddies tonight. I have a lady myself, but thanks and I back off. I was kind of locked in between a group of people, my buddies being on the other side of a small wall of people. 
we ended up getting separated. So she just starts talking to me normally. Fine, that's okay, she can talk all she wants. She's this little Hispanic girl about the same age as me, ethnicity isn't pertinent, just trying to be descriptive. I'm Mariah, I'm from California. You from here? I say sure, been here all my life, and try my best to ignore her, but at the same time not be a complete ass. I figure she's just hitting on me, and I'll answer her questions and leave. She says, I think it's lame and cold here, you can warm me up. It's been a while since another woman has been this upfront with me about attraction, so I'm a bit confused on what I should actually do. I say, thanks but that's not necessary. I'm in a relationship and I'm just hanging out with my boys tonight and start to try to walk away through a crowd of people. I motion at my friend Matt who is single, trying to tell him to take my spot and handle this chick. I don't wanna be in this situation. He kind of looked over, smiled, and looked away. He didn't see exactly what was happening or understand. She grabs me again and puts my arm around her and tries to dance with me. I stay to her side awkwardly as not to have her get in front of me. She keeps trying to move my arm down to her ass and I keep bringing my hand back up. Finally she grabs me by the neck, kisses me on the cheek and says in my ear, I will suck your whole dick as she touches my inner thigh and she squeezes her left breast. This caught me completely off guard and again just didn't know what to really do. It went from 0 to 100, and I was completely perplexed. I said, no, that's not happening. I finally shoved people out of the way and got away from her. I'll let my buddies know what happened, and we moved to the other end of the building. I'll be honest, this actually made me feel really uncomfortable. I'm not going to claim to have PTSD or any sensationalized bullshit, but it was an odd situation for me that definitely stuck out. I don't want to be ridiculed or critiqued, and I try to understand all perspectives. Sure, many people might think this isn't a big deal, or that I should get over it. In reality maybe it wasn't, but we don't approach this problem like that when it comes to women. I could have and probably should have left sooner, but I don't like creating unnecessary tension or conflict, and I didn't expect the situation to escalate in that manner. Sure if I was single I maybe would have reacted differently to all this, but that's still a pretty big maybe. I was somewhat tipsy, so that might have stumped my thinking process, and she didn't seem like she was that intoxicated or high either, though that's not 100% relevant. Anyways that's really it. I don't want to get hyper political, but lord knows if the roles were reversed and I forcefully kissed some woman on the cheek and touched her and said, you'll suck my whole dick I would have been slapped across the face and likely had the police called on me. Okay, so this is a story of when a girl who tried to break my relationship with my best friend because she was jealous of us playing League of Legends all the time. My best pal and I would play league all the time. We went to separate colleges after high school and kept in touch with video games. Anytime my best friend was dating someone, he would constantly brag about the girl. One day, he got into another relationship, told me about this beautiful blonde girl that he has been dating for a week and how she might be the one. I, of course shrug it off since there has been many the one with this guy xd. Anyway skipping a big portion, a month later I went to a college frat party with some friends to chill and smoke some weed. While hanging with some friends, doing some magic the gathering, a girl came up to me and pulled me away from my friend saying like, you're cute, let's have some fun. I'm at the moment thinking to myself, man I'm getting lucky tonight. Anyway we had our fun, she gave me a blowjob and we ended up doing the dirty. She gave me her name, but said she didn't have a phone and she will contact me by discord later. Three days later, my best friend jumps on league, and we chatted up on discord. I was telling him about the girl I got lucky with at the frat party. He laughed about it when I told her she never contacted me again afterwards. My idiot friend joking about how I was a quick shot. After our giggles, he asked if I got her name which I replied yes. I told him her name, and he was silent for like 2 minutes. I was like, yo you still there, and he said dude, stop fucking with me. I'm like, what you talking about bitch? After that the horror show began. He told me the girl's name I stated was the same fucking name as the girl he is dating. I'm thinking like, dude there's no fucking way, it's a 6 hour drive to my college she wouldn't do that, and why would she? 
Then my best friend stated that she has been seeing friends for 3 days out of state. Anyway we were silent for like a minute I said that it was unlikely and they probably shared the same name. After a hour of awkward gaming my friend decided to go out to get some food and I smoked a bowl and watched anime. Three hours later I get a discord call from my friend. I hopped on and the first thing he said was, I fucking knew it. I asked him what was up, and he told me that his new girlfriend was the girl I fucked. I was fucking mind blown over the matter. After stuttering for a second I simply asked why. The girl apparently was jealous of my friend and I playing league. She decided to drive all the way to my college, stayed with friends, found me and decided to fuck me so that when she returned, she could tell my best friend that if he didn't stop talking to me, she would dump him and date me. The ending of this story is obvious, she ended up getting dumped by my best friend and started messaging me on discord, which I blocked her. Luckily my friend and I are still friends, but it was fucking disturbing moments of our lives. In my experience. Gets jealous or angry if you're having fun without her. When you're taking a picture together, they never look at the camera. Very impulsive and makes decisions without giving any real logical thought first. Case in point, girl I was dating adopted a dog out of the blue, has never owned a dog, never mentioned thinking of adopting one, but she just woke up one day and said they wanted a dog and went to the shelter and got one that weekend. She tried to return it to the shelter after about a month because she no longer wanted the dog. On the topics of dogs, if they think liking a dog is a personality trait or uses flirty lines with you like, I'll probably like your dog better than you, or you'll come second in my life after my dog if they own one already or if they only want to date someone with a dog. I love dogs, have a German Shepherd growing up, and my family still has her, but it should not be a reason to date someone or not date someone, and it is not a defining personality trait to like dogs. If they stalk people on social media, like your friends or girls that you are friends with, or try to friend, or follow those people on social media before meeting them in real life, or before asking you about them. If they stalk you on social media, or know more details about something than you have previously shared with them. If they ask to see pictures on your phone, and then started swiping right to see photos on your camera roll, as if they don't trust you. Like in scene fault, if they pull the yada 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 line with you, or something similar, to tell you a story, but to leave out key facts, that would make you think less of them. Story here is from the same girl I mentioned above, but, she was laid off from her job, didn't get a lot of details the week it happened. About a week later I come to find out from her, because she let more details slip out, that she was actually fired, and it stemmed from a fight she had with another co-worker. The co-worker was her ex-boyfriend. She never told me one of her exes was also a co-worker. That was a 4 month dating experience that caused me to spot red flags earlier on, and not waste my time. So I have this problem of being nice and respectful to everyone I meet. Whether they're some person on the street who I accidentally bump into while walking around, a lawyer, a cop, a hobo, it doesn't matter what, I treat everyone politely and respectfully. Oftentimes this turns out to be a big problem for me. I'm not humble bragging I promise, just giving some background. I'm not a bad looking guy, I take care of myself, put effort into my appearance and dress well. I've also been told my deep voice is sexy by both men and women. I'm charismatic and funny. I'm actually working on a stand-up routine for open mic night at a comedy club at my girlfriend's urging. Sadly this combination of being respectful, polite, chill, and attractive makes me a walking magnet for girls with either BPD or NPD. I get a lot of polarized responses from women. They'll either latch onto me immediately or be incredibly impolite and shitty for no reason. Anyway, to cut to the point. I was an EMT for 8 years. Besides the norm of taking calls, treating patients and bringing them to the ER, we sat standby at lots of public events. I really liked signing up for all the event coverage, it was one of my favorite parts of the job. So one 4th of July, I'm with my partner and we are covering a big fireworks event. We are both chilling with the other M's, police, fire, etc. Well, I get to talking to this one girl from another ambulance that I'd never seen before. She's pretty cute and seems pretty chill. We are hitting it off. Anyway, this moves along and we trade phone numbers. 
we start spending time together. I have her over my house a bunch. It's the summer, so we spend a lot of time on the deck outside grilling and chilling. About two weeks into it, I start getting weird texts from her, their comments about the comings and goings at my house. Out of he fucking blue she goes full blown insane and demands to know who all these people are that visit my house and describes the cars they drive and what times they've been to my house. I have an open door policy for my friends and coworkers during the summer, stop by and chill in the yard, grill some food, have a drink. So yeah, people come and go quite a bit. And she somehow knows all of this information. The texts get creepier and more angrier. I tell her to come over and hang out at my place. I'm kind and considerate, but very matter of fact and break up with her, ending whatever this relationship is. Going so far to tell her I don't think it's a good idea to be friends anymore. She handles it okay enough, a bit dramatic but I spend the time and talk her through things. She leaves my place sad and down about everything, but stable and okay, so I thought. About 3 days go by before I start getting the texts from here again. Asking about the girls that visit my house, who the fuck are those cunts? Are those cunts coming to your house and spreading their legs for you? Even getting more graphic and detailed. We are talking full on rage jealousy. Having never been in a situation quite like this before, I respond firmly that it's not like that, it's not any of your business. And I've always been honest with you. I get a barrage of texts back, I don't respond. After that, the texts bounce between the extremes of love mush and extreme hate. I don't respond, but I also save them all and document them because I recognize the crazy. A few days go by and the texts stop. Woo, the post breakup craziness is over. Holy shit was I wrong. Handwritten notes start appearing on my car. Extremely detailing and very graphic love notes. One a day about. Hate notes are appearing on my friends cars, both the men and the women. Nothing violent, but rage and accusatory. I get the police involved at this point. I have all the notes saved, all the texts. I get a restraining order. I'm buddies with a lot of cops, so they cruise by my house every hour, stop by off duty, checking in on me. Very cool. They find her sleeping in my bushes one night. Not only that, but it turns out she would park her car many blocks away and walk to my neighborhood and creep around my bushes and my neighbor's bushes. I have a full-blown stalker. I was scared before, now I'm pretty terrified and in shock. You have to understand, this had never happened to me before at that point in my life. I was 26. In my dating history to that point I'd never had any girls take it further than crying when we broke up and then ignore me if they saw me afterwards. That was worst case scenario. Most times we remained friendly and were able to stay in the same social circles. This is one of those moments when you feel yourself become more of an adult. Know what I'm talking about? I'm at the police department handling this crazy insane situation on my own. The cops took care of the situation. They instilled in her the scope of how much trouble she could be in and how if anything like this happens again, she'll be in jail. They decide what's best is to take her to the mental hospital and have her spend the night and get checked out. So finally this was the last time I'd ever heard from her. Thank god. This situation is over. Things can go back to normal, mostly. I'm now extremely cautious and on guard. Sometimes you can see these things coming. You meet someone who seems completely normal and chill, but from now on, in the back of your mind, you're always wondering what this person is capable of, how crazy might they be, male or female, platonic or romantic, I'm always scared about what could happen. For a while afterwards, the trauma lasted, maybe I had slash had some kind of PTSD from this, I don't really know. I had a horrible experience with a psychiatrist when discussing this whole ordeal and now I'm even more guarded to speak to a professional after that. I know I wrote a giant off topic novel of a post, thank you for coming for the ride with me. I've had a lot of stress in my life lately and getting this out there took a weight off my shoulders. <laughs> Ever hear of a Madonna Hall complex? It's when you put someone else on a wrap on an unrealistic pedestal of purity and then cannot emotionally cope with them being sexually complex at the same time. I wasn't in a relationship with this woman, but she was a sort of a work wife and a mentor to me. I was very young and she was a good bit older. She took me under her wing at our work and I naively looked up to her. 
she would pursue me, want to meet outside of work for coffees or drink, call me when she was bored etc. Looking back I think I enjoyed the attention and the friendship with her because I looked up to her and it made me feel good she took an interest in me. That was probably unhealthy to do, but I honestly didn't connect that there could be any other aspect to our relationship than a platonic one. I think that she had feelings for me and probably loved that there was a cute young guy who wanted to spend time with her too, but respected the boundary of actually acting on it. When her and I met was young, and, I'm sure obviously to her, was not very experienced. A more boyish hopeless romantic type. As I got older though, I got more experience though more relationships, and became more confident sexually and around women. I was no longer naive and boyish. Her attitude towards me changed. I could tell, whenever the subject of my romantic life came up she would subtly cringe, and would either be passive aggressive to me, or lash out, and talk about me behind my back at work. It started to get so bad. She was rude to me all the time. I'd hear about her complaining how much I had changed, and how sweet used to be. In the end she chased away a girl I was dating. A really nice girl wanted to be with, and told our employer I was interviewing for other jobs, and would be leaving the company soon, so they cut my hours. I quit soon after once I had realized my personal and professional life were now in the hands of this woman. After I quit I started dating my now gf and little, while later guess who contacted my gf out the blue, just to tell her I was an abuser, and that she should get out while she can. I could never have never seen this at the time, but my take, now that I'm older and wiser is, that she was grooming me and manipulating me. She made our relationship into something between a mother son and boyfriend girlfriend. I think she liked my attention and the hold she had over me, but as I got older I gave my attention to other women and diverged from her image of me, she couldn't take it. After that I totally cut her out and will not have anything to do with her ever again. Actually a woman here, but an old friend of mine dated a super pie show once. Before I even met her I had a feeling something about her was off. He told me how they met and on their first meeting she told him an awful lot. When someone you just meet starts telling you their dramatic sob story, that is a big red flag. In my experience it has never proved me wrong. Anyways here's the creep story of the crazy bitch. The girl, well call her Jessica, was adopted and her real family was apparently murdered by her father, mother and twin sister. Her father was still apparently on the loose. When Jessica met my friend, we shall call him Joe, she was currently seeing someone and ended up breaking up with him and started dating Joe. One night Jessica goes to her exes to pick up some things and she doesn't end up returning till the next day with hikers all over her. She claims the ex threatened to kill her if she left and ended up raping her. Sometime later the night before Joe drives 2 hours to surprise my best friend, who he also used to have a crush on. Jessica falls very ill and distraught and comes to find she's pregnant. Joe still tries to drive to surprise our friend on her birthday, but because he stayed up all night with Jessica he falls asleep at the wheel and ends up in Iku. He was honestly lucky to be alive. When me and my friend go to visit him in the hospital Jessica tells us the story how, when she arrived at the hospital they won't allow her to see Joe until she exclaims that she is pregnant with his child. She also shows us small cuts on her upper arm that she said she inflicted on herself from feeling guilty about Joe in the hospital. Now as someone who actually suffered from depression and self-harm, her story and scars to me seemed like a joke. A little while later Jessica of course ends up having a miscarriage. To be honest I don't remember how Joe finally realized she was batshit crazy. We all tried to tell him. They finally break up but sadly the story is not over. Joe gets a new college roommate. Jessica ends up dating the roommate. Joe of course tries to warn his roommate, but he doesn't listen. Jessica then exclaims that Joe's roommate was also raping her. Now I can't prove anything but I truly believe Jessica went full gone girl and inflicted bruises and injuries on herself to make it seem like she was indeed being raped. I can't remember much of what happened after that as sadly, while Joe was with Jessica he lost a lot of his close friends. So we all lost touch with him for the most part. I still can't believe all this actually happened. I honestly have experienced quite a few other people Jessica in my life, but she was by far the queen of pie show bitches. Trust your gut guys and your friends and family. This is going to get buried so fuck it. 
Reading through the comments, a lot of these red flags or signs of being creepy relate to my ex-girlfriend. Let's call her T. We dated in high school, were together officially for a year, before we broke up during our first year of college. Background to the courtship, or whatever you want to call it, I was a bit shy with girls and T was the first girl I was properly ever into. My friend had a crush on her, and I started talking to her to try and swing her around his way, wingman for the guy. We ended up texting a lot and got along really well, developed a crush on her, and unrelated my friend's feelings for her left, and he got a gf. So we were talking a lot and getting on great, I knew she liked me by the drunk texts she used to send me, but she didn't want a relationship. I knew she was seeing guys, we were 16 so wasn't hookups, but just fooling around and stuff. Fast forward to the summer of that year, school was breaking up and we talked. We both knew we liked each other, but she didn't want to give it a go, she instead suggested that we be together i.e. I be her emotional tampon while she's free to get with other guys and be free for the summer. I, in my immaturity and stupidity, that a girl was actually into me, agreed. Bad idea. Long story short didn't work out, but we stayed friends, and I still liked her. Fast forward to our final year of school, we had a formal dance that I went to with a close friend of mine who happened to be a girl. Tickets were cheaper as a couple. So did I mention that T had overwhelming jealousy and possessiveness over me despite the fact that we weren't going out? No? Well it's a tool we'll save for later. Formal comes along. Lots of drunk people, I didn't drink and had the task of minding people. My date went off to dance and chase after her crush and I was minding my friend, same friend who had the crush on T as he was very drunk. T comes over very drunk and starts saying how she wants to be with me all this shit, how she likes me, she's sorry etc. Long story short, we spend the rest of the formal together and end up officially together. I was happy, genuinely, here was a girl I had been pining after for an age and she was my gf. I was thrilled. Everything was going well, was our final year in school, so school was busy, but me and T were going strong. Whatever discretions we had earlier on were forgotten, and we were having fun. But did I mention she was jealous? Oh boy. Anytime a girl looked at me, or I talked to a girl she got mad. Yet when she talked to guys and flirted it was just because she had a flirty personality? Can you see the inequality because I can? As I mentioned above, I have a close female friend who I went to the formal with. T was jealous of her. Incredibly jealous of her, but oh did she hide it so well. So well in fact, that I wasn't made aware of the it until after our final exams and school was over and I was on holidays with my family when she drunk called me trying to dump me. Now I love this girl, she was my first girlfriend and though our relationship wasn't perfect it felt strong. In reflection it was far from it, but 20 over 20 hindsight is a wonderful thing. I get back from the holiday and we sort things out. We talk. I thought we resolved it and everything was fun again. Had a few rocky patches that summer, but was mostly good. Then college comes around. She explodes. Tries to make me block my friend on FB and terminate the friendship because it upset her. After putting it off, I relented because I was in love and stupid and thought I was going to be with her forever. I figured I'd meet my friend and explain the situation to her, let it boil over and unblock her and everything would be back to normal. How wrong I was. T dumped me a few weeks later because we were drifting apart due to college and I wasn't making her a priority anymore. Like dude I see you every day, I gave up one of my closest friends for you and I don't prioritize you. I'll let her dump me. I felt shit, but I wasn't fighting it anymore. The signs had been there for a few months, so I'll let it go. She dumped me the day of a big party we were going to, yet she still came along to I hadn't told my friends what had happened, yet but they could tell something was up. Proceed to me getting blackout drunk, crying and generally being a mess, while T said I could have saved the relationship if I had paid her attention that night. Like the fuck. Anyhow, we didn't get back together, I felt like shit for months, but I got over her. I'm glad to say that I made it up with my friend and I'd happily say she's my best friend now, we are closer than ever, and I love her to bits. She understands where I came from, even if I don't myself, and the fact she forgave me makes me love her more. I'd never make that mistake again.
I learned a lot from that relationship, learned my self worth, to never put a relationship ahead of friends or your own mental health. The jealousy and possessiveness took a huge toll on me for nearly 2 years. It helped me to learn the differences between a healthy and an unhealthy relationship, to better deal with my emotions, to understand people a bit more. I'm a lot more mature now, and with the experience I have now I would never have dated T in the first place due to the way I was treated in our courtship. But you live and you learn, and I've learned from it. TLDR. Possessiveness, jealousy, disrespect for feelings, trying to control your friends, and general toxicity is not good for you. Edit. I'm aware that this doesn't directly answer the question, but it felt good to type it out and maybe someone can learn from it, if anyone even reads it. Also if the formatting is whack I'm on mobile. Sorry. Have a good day people. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe the channel.